Today's New Testament reading is from the Epistle to the Hebrews, the ninth chapter. Now even the first covenant had regulations for worship and an earthly place of holiness. For a tent was prepared, the first section, in which the lampstand and the table and the bread of presence were. It is called the holy place. Behind the second curtain was a second section called the most holy place, having the golden altar of incense and the ark of the covenant covered on all sides with gold, in which was a golden urn holding the manna, and Aaron's staff that budded, and the tablets of the covenant. Above it were the cherubim of glory overshadowing the mercy seat. Of these things we cannot now speak in detail. These preparations having thus been made, the priests go regularly into the first section, performing their ritual duties. But into the second only the high priest goes, and he but once a year, and not without taking blood, which he offers for himself and for the unintentional sins of the people. By this the Holy Spirit indicates that the way into the holy places is not yet opened as long as the first section is still standing, which is symbolic for the present age. According to this arrangement, gifts and sacrifices are offered that cannot perfect the conscience of the worshiper, but deal only with food and drink and various washings, regulations for the body, imposed until the time of reformation. But when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands that is not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy places, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of defiled persons with the ashes of a heifer sanctify for the purification of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Therefore he is the mediator of a new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance, since a death has occurred that redeems them from the transgressions committed under the first covenant. For where a will is involved, the death of the one who made it must be established, for a will takes effect only at death, since it is not in force as long as the one who made it is alive. Therefore, not even the first covenant was inaugurated without blood. For when every commandment of the law had been declared by Moses to all the people, he took the blood of calves and goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant that God has commanded for you. And in the same way he sprinkled with the blood both the tent and all the vessels used in worship. Indeed, under the law almost everything is purified with blood, and without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness of sins. Thus it was necessary for the copies of the heavenly things to be purified with these rites. But the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ has entered, not into holy places made with hands which are copies of the true things, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Nor was it to offer himself repeatedly, as the high priest enters the holy places every year with blood not his own. For then he would have had to suffer repeatedly since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the ages to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes judgment, so Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, 
but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. This is the word of the Lord. For today's meditation on God's word, we welcome the Reverend Dr. George Lobin. Dear friends in Christ, the text for this meditation is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 15. For this reason, Christ is the mediator of a new covenant. The book of Hebrews emphasizes that Jesus Christ is the fulfiller of all of Israel's history, including her worship rites. Hebrews goes to great lengths to point out how Christ supersedes everything which was a part of the old covenant between God and his people. An amazing event happened at the time of Christ's death. In the temple, the curtain that separated the Holy of Holies from the holy place was torn in two. The writer of Hebrews says that the life of Christ culminated by his entering into the most holy of holies, heaven itself, not taking bull and goat blood, but his own precious blood in offering for the sins of everyone and making a once-for-all sacrifice, a never-to-be-repeated offering, establishing a new covenant relation between God and people. We personally participate in this new covenant when we eat Christ's body and drink his blood at the table of the Lord. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you, Luke quoted Christ as saying. Several years ago, I read about a priest of a small parish in the Philippines who went to his cardinal, Cardinal Sin, S-I-N-N, to discuss a disturbing problem. In his congregation was a peasant woman who piously served God, but she claimed to talk to Jesus from time to time. And this disturbed her priest, and he told the cardinal about his concern. Send her to me, the cardinal said. When the woman and Cardinal Sin met, he told her that the next time she spoke with Jesus, she was to ask him what indiscretion her Cardinal committed while a young man. This was a plan to test whether or not the woman spoke the truth. The Cardinal was convinced no one knew of his sin except his confessor and his Lord. Several months later, the woman returned to him. Have you talked with Jesus again, the cardinal asked. I have, the woman responded. And did you remember to ask him the question I gave you? He continued, yes, I did, the woman said. And what did he say, the cardinal asked concernedly. The woman answered, he said, I forgot. The prophet Jeremiah prophesied of a time when God would initiate a new covenant with his people, the terms of which would be, for I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. Whenever you are able, receive the body and blood of Christ our Savior in the precious Lord's Supper. You can have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ and the precious sacrifice he made in our stead. This is exciting, life-changing news. A forgetful God when it comes to our sin. And an unblemished lamb offering his blood in exchange for the punishment we deserve are gifts from God that will bring joy and peace to our lives, even in our darkest hour. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 